everybody. All you good looking people. Thank yes. you so much. Without you, it would be a nothing we'd be here, program. We'd be lonely. We'd be very lonely. <laughs> Tell them about while David yes, we have a, gets a shot of their beautiful faces. We have a handsome couple with, called Miles and Catherine Weiss have been in a ministry for over 30 years. They're, they only look 30 years. I know, and Miles has been a licensed marriage and family therapist. After serving in India, Africa, and Russia, they were called to proclaim the relationship between Israel and world revival. Today, they serve as a pastors of Jewish ministries at the Father's House of Peace. They also lead the Mess Messianic Gathering House of Peace, Beth Shalom, for six years, they hosted Zola Levitt, we all remember that, oh, yes, on the network. presents a television program broadcast weekly around the world. They periodically lead tours to Israel, wow, Ooh. and presented marriage enrichment seminars from Hawaii to Siberia. Their message is one of hope and fulfilled destiny. Siberia, yes. yep. goodness sake. We planted we a church, well, we we're part of planting a church. Right. Sorry, honey, I That's skipped it. on you. Yeah, okay. That's all right. We were part of planting a church in Siberia and the young pastor was single and so people were coming off of drugs and alcohol and the marriages were foundering. So our group sent us to Siberia to do marriage seminars there and the people had been it's married. It's kind of like a joke, you know. You're not doing too good here. I'm sending you to Siberia. <laughs> well, it was it's a true. blessing. <laughs> they, they had been married under communism and they oh, wanted yeah. more. They were all born again, brand new born again people. They First, wanted more than anything yeah. to have Jesus in their marriages. First so we taught them about 500 of them for about a week and then we re we did a ceremony of rededication of their marriages with the Lord in the middle of it. It, it was and so it was profound. The Holy Spirit came like a hoopah and mm -hmm. just settled over. What is this, a hoopah? Oh. And I know that in Greek. But <laughs> the hoopah is the wedding marriage canopy. canopy. Okay. Jewish okay. wedding canopy. Which is the glory of God. Yes. Wow. So the glory of God came down and, and sealed this new vow. What that nationality they, are you? I am I am an American, full and full. So but I'm I mean, Irish. You're very dark. So I'm Scottish and English and um, German and... Um, yes, you are. Yeah, European. So both, both yeah. sets of parents. So how did you two meet? Let's oh. start there. Well, I... Go ahead. Honey. I'll start it. I was uh, <laughs> so we we are completely different people. I'm a New York Jew. She was a California Catholic. He's an extrovert. Yep. <laughs> or introvert. <laughs> yes. And um, I'm Nor I'm Woodstock generation. She's Nordstrom generation. <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Wow. Uh, we're East Coast, West Coast, yeah. and e everything was not yeah. does not fit. You, but you know, this is not supposed to work. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> that's, that's what that's they said. That's why I wrote the book because yeah. we know that with the Lord it <laughs> yeah. can work. Right. So. So I was on what my friends called my magical misery tour. After my dad died when I was about 18, mm -hmm. I wandered. I wandered. And actually, after my bar mitzvah, when I started really wandering in my heart, and I was very, very lost and went in from very, very dark places, I wound up in California where my friends were, some of my friends. And um, Speaking of dark. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I met this girl. Yeah. And she told me on the first cup of coffee that we had that Jesus was our Lord and Savior. I had no idea what she was talking about because I, I, you know, growing up in my neighborhood, there were the Jews and everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody else wants to kill the Jews, so be careful. Wow. So the idea of falling in love with the most beautiful girl I ever yeah. saw. She's Gentile. She's Gentile and a born again Christian. I had no idea what that was. She told me at the first cup of coffee, you know, I like you, but I'm in love with someone else. Oh. You said that? I did. God gave me such boldness. You're a fanatic. I am. I'm <laughs> That's a believer. What I was afraid of. And I and God just gave me such faith. You know, um, I was raised as a Catholic, but I had received the Lord in college, and somebody said to me, you know, do you know that you're a sinner? Just the, the simple gospel, right? Yes, yes. The, the four spiritual laws. And mm -hmm. I was ripe and I was ready. So the first time I heard that Jesus was the way to the Father and that we didn't have to have a mediator, I said, I want that. And God came radically into my heart well, and that's my the life. Holy Spirit, isn't it was it? the Holy Spirit yeah. and He began to teach me. Mm -hmm. And so then when I met Miles, I said, you know, I'm on this journey and if you want anything to do with me, mm -hmm. you got to get to know him. And so fortunately, the Lord in his providence puts the same hunger in miles. And I said, you know, if you're a true Jew, you'll look in your, your own book and your book is, is God's book and it, and it has you in it. And when he opened the book, he saw how absolutely oh Jewish the book Praise was. God. And yes. he, he said, this, you know, this is a talking book. These, these words in, in red, they come alive. And not only that, that my, peer, my people came from this line and it's absolutely Jewish. So, Did you know anything about the Bible before she was I talking to you? I grew up in Hebrew school. 
I went to Hebrew school three days a week. I lived in a kosher home. I was bar mitzvahed. My parents helped build this local did synagogue. Did you wear one of those beanie hats? I did not. Only in okay. only in shul, only in synagogue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was. It was conservative, conservative, not orthodox. Okay. Yeah. But you know, steeped in the traditions and the culture yeah. and the, the ceremonial stuff. Yeah. But I had no personal relationship with the right. Lord, obviously. But but the other thing that was that uh, I had been away from my book since yeah. I was thirteen. Sure. I was 33 when we You're met. In the so, new age. So I was in, wandering through the yeah. new age and all these mysteries and yeah. la di da. Yeah. And so uh, it was shocking to me how the whole story from Genesis to Maps is Jewish. It's a Jewish story. It's about the people, it's about the promise, it's about the Savior, it's about the land. Exactly. Incredible. Your I had people. No idea. Yep. Your people. My people That's shall right. be your people. That's and he, he said. said that, you know, when he received Jesus as his Messiah, he became more Jewish because he understood. Yeah. The call and the destiny on the people, you know, and, and not to run from that. Yeah. Even as believers, we're not to run from the pressure that the world wants to put on us, but we're to run towards, run towards the answers. Yeah. Yeah. And it was totally supernatural because when Catherine said to me, if you were a real seeker, you'd look in your own book, I went back to my office at the time and I, threw, I talked to the ceiling. Yes. And I said, if, if she's right and you're real, you have to send me guidance. And the next day, a man came up to me in a parking lot of an anatomy class at colleges I was going to, and he said, uh, small talk with me, he was a musician, I was listening to some music, he said, oh, I'm a musician, we talked about that, and he said, he stopped in mid-sentence and he said, you know, the real reason I came over here is because the Lord told me, go talk to the guy with the red car, you've been praying for guidance. Oh, oh my repeated word. the prayer back to me that I had prayed silently I got and alone chills going through yeah. my head before. And that started a series of supernatural prophetic, events that were yeah. completely prophetic. A prophetic man came and called me out, and a group of 700 people called me out by name. There's a young man here named Miles, where are you? Unbelievable. Word of knowledge, and called me forward, held my hand. He said, God's calling you to the ministry. You've never fit, any, fit in anywhere because you don't belong anywhere. He knows where you've been and he's going to give you a, a healing touch for people. Belong anywhere except in, in the, the body, body of Christ. Yeah. And so that's been our journey is to so, build bridges. So when did, when did this happen before marriage? We, yes. Yeah, and, we and dated we, for two years. We were before a little we bit in a revival in California. We were in a revival meeting and they were having these prophetic meetings come. And um, so, so, we, so we were at this meeting just hungry. And, um, and I, I, in my heart was like, oh my goodness. God can know your name and you can, he could he could know anything. The fear of God came on that meeting and the fear of God then began to lead us in our call. And so he began to also show us that in Ephesians 2, he's broken down the middle wall of partition and he's made us both one. So the 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 call and the mandate was to be one and to bring the awareness of the the, the richness of the heritage that we have with the Jewish people, but the, the sap that we have, the oil. So you and both the, wanted to start this ministry. To God God did it. At the same time. He, yeah, we, we, Miles, we, we, I want to I hear, how did you ask her to marry you? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so it was a two-year process. Uh, the summer before I asked her, I went uh, to New York City with the Jews for Jesus to, to hand out tracts and do that. My pastor said, I was like six months old, and the Lord, he said, <laughs> No, a little bit longer than that. He said, um, "You will. Uh, this will be good for you to get persecuted. It will be very good for you." And so I went to New York. It was a great, great experience, and came back. We had that time apart, which was back in the day we'd say, "Put it on the altar." Yeah, yeah. we definitely that kind of put thing. it on we, the we altar. Did. But every day I would want to see her or talk to her. You right. Know? So, uh, Back in the day, we'd call. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there were phones. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like as, no you know, texting. No, no yeah. texting. Yeah. 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 And so, um, so, so, so tell so, me now, so you I got together. Yeah, well, I took, we went up to the, there's, you know, we live in a very beautiful part of the world, and at the top of one of the mountains was a seminary. Uh, it was a Baptist seminary, Golden Gate Baptist wow. Seminary. Beautiful. At the top of the hill, looked over the whole Bay Area, and that, we went up there, and that's why I asked So ah. where we studied the Bible together, where we went to Bible college, it was very sweet. Where we went to Bible college, he got yeah. down on a knee, and he asked me, and I said wow. yes. So, so wow. did you know you were going to be in a ministry together, though? I mean, how soon did uh, that well, happen? Well, we were definitely in the, in the call together, and we, yeah. when Miles said we separated, we did, you know, like, put it on the altar. Like, so okay. were you rich when you got married? Did you have a... a, a a dower? Or he a did. Did he? He uh, did. God has blessed rich Miles. Rich doesn't. Was, I he was rich. definitely I mean, blessed. He's a Jew. You <laughs> gotta be rich or you're not you were a Jew. Definitely you were definitely blessed. edit that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're definitely edit blessed. That. And I didn't realize that he had an inheritance from his family, but because, but you know, we were in, God, Trying when to hide God, it from her. he did. Yeah. So God supernaturally <laughs> called me and actually I was dating a man who had more money than Miles. Way, way more. So, so, um, so anyways, you just had your pick. 
Well, well God gave me a me choice. See. He said, so, you. But here, no, here's the thing that you, you actually, you actually were leading to this. We were born again into a church that was a congregation that was full on about missions and purpose and yeah. bigger than bigger than both of you. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that from the and that's in our book as well. That from the very beginning, one of the things that kept us together and kept us moving right. forward was the idea that this is a purpose that we were born for, that we were born again for, mm -hmm. and that putting God putting us together, He wants to do something. See, you know, something that is bigger, uh, than, a, bigger than both of us. Yeah. And that's kind of been one of the keeping factors in our yeah, marriage. But marriage, you got into the marriage. like a Yeah, I went right from Bible college to graduate school, became a marriage and family therapist. I've been doing biblical so counseling. So he's, he's got a brain because all Jews have big brains. They right do. Now. They I'm, do. I'm not kidding you. They do. I was raised around <laughs> Jews. And I'm telling you, that philosophy, my dad, I, I mean, he drilled it into me, but he didn't have to because I saw it. Well, we were, God gave Miles wisdom that, you know, we could reach more Jews with an education than just with a track because God wants to give us, um, you know, an ability to go into all cultures. Yeah. And yeah, we all, want to be yeah. all things to all, all men. And mm -hmm. so my, my pastor wisely said, you were designed for this, so you need to go right to graduate school, get licensed, and be a therapist, a counselor, so you can do that through media, through books, and and and, and reach out to the world around you right. and wear lots of hats. Can you help me out here? Because I, I, I put this down so I remember, okay? Sure. You, you've been 30, 30 years licensed. Right. Yes. Okay. And, and you're a marriage therapist. Marriage and family therapist, oh, MFT marriage, in California. Okay. Marriage and family like, therapist. Yes. Okay. Yeah. What is that? That's someone who goes through an undergraduate degree and then a master's degree. So, and, and they didn't then, just hang out a shingle. No, oh, no, oh, no, it's no. a master's. It's a master's degree plus a 3,000 hour internship. Whew. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And then you sit for oral boards and then you know it, you do written boards and oral okay. boards, et cetera. It's very rigorous. Do you remember California. the first, I hate to say it, customers? Do you remember? Yeah, I can say they probably paid us $10, right? <laughs> so the first, well, you. I have a great story about my early days. Um, I was fresh out of graduate school. I was still an intern. I would go into the to my pastor's office on on Mondays when no one was there, and I would counsel for ten dollars an hour, like uh, Lucy with the psychiatric yeah, yeah. lemonade stand, <laughs> yeah. right? And uh, and the 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 court, Sonoma County courts, the next county over, sat, found me somehow. Started sending me men who were con were had two convictions for violence, domestic violence, and if they did it one more time, they were going to go to San Quentin, and they were terrified. So they would come in these these guys that I, and I, I was trying to think, wait a minute, I graduated with honors, but I can't remember if they taught me how to fix this. <laughs> Isn't is this amazing? Is it so this amazing? What am I doing with these yeah. people? So I prayed and I, oh, God gave me a, a word that they had, they had this big thick book called How to Stop the Violence Now, but they couldn't implement it because they weren't believers, sure. right? So I said, well, let me borrow your book, right? And I would borrow the book, I went through it, and I said, okay, I came back to them and I said, I know a guy who can help you. Do you want to meet him? And they said, Doc, you got to help me. You gotta, I can't, I, you know, if I hit my wife, I don't want to hit her again. But if I do, I'm going to go away for life. I, wow. I, I just three, three strikes, you know. Yeah. I, can't, I can't hit her. I don't want to. Okay, well, I, I'm telling you, I can introduce you to this guy, but you got to go his way. You know, he, he's got a certain way that he goes, and if you want what he's got, you got to go with him that way. Yeah. So I'll do anything. So I led them to the Lord. Wow. And they were yes. able to So that was the guy he had to meet. <laughs> that was the guy. That was the guy. Man, oh, man. And that was, and that's kind of, the reason, I, I haven't really told that story on television before, but the reason why that strikes me so often is that it's the supernatural nature mm -hmm. yes. of yes. biblical counseling, yes. of faith Faith-based right. counseling. You know? How many books have you written? Well, this is our first about marriage and family. I've well, written some I mean, things. Well, he's, got, he's going to write a lot of them because this is good. Yeah, well, when we, heaven hits home. I like also, the title. We also have the other one, Miles, that you keep. You always forget your first book. Oh, the epic love story. That's yeah. about Israel and the church. Yeah. It's about the Jews oh, and Gentiles right. together in Messiah. So, wow. yeah. But so the one that Catherine's writing that now, it's almost. Oh, done. you're writing one. Yes, I have one is. about Ruth. Can, Ruth, can, the can bride in the harvest field. Can you read this part of your Catherine's perspective? Sure. I love it. Sure. You go ahead, honey. I don't have my glasses with me. Thank. Thank you. This is Catherine. Yes. Right. This is Catherine's perspective. Okay. It's a, it's a, um, just a little block in yeah. the book here. When Miles and I first met, we came from two different backgrounds. Miles is a New York Jew, and I am a California Catholic. My parents wanted a country club wedding, and his family had their preferences <laughs> as well. One day when we were out looking for the wedding venue, we were both aware that if we were going to make our relationship work, we were going to have to let go of our own old ways and let God influence us in the path of life that was before us. On a twilight eve, as I was hugging Miles in the beautiful countryside of the Napa Valley, I looked in his eyes and said, I love you, 
keep changing. Keep changing. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I, I tell you, yeah, that just came out enough. of me like the Holy Spirit, you know. And what I what I fit, was feeling was that, of course, we're going to be committed. But as you're committed, yeah. you, you want the best for that person. So yeah. you, you move on, and they move on, and mm -hmm. and that's, that's what is it? What is a Yeshua bride? Yeshua good, is, good is the Hebrew name for Jesus. Okay. Yeah, so, so Yeshua is bride is the bride of Messiah, the bride yeah. of Christ. You have a whole, I mean, the book is replete right. with right. Hebra Hebraisms. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. he wanted to bring a flavor of his culture and the Jewish heritage that God has for the church to awaken to that. Which we see all over the world right now. Right. right. Not right. that we put on or become a Jew, but God, we, we receive the, the, the fullness of the root that God mm -hmm. has for us. That, we, so say, we say, we uh, say, um, Culturally distinct, prophetically linked. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, and, I and pray that's every right. morning early. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. It touches my heart, brother. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, it, it is it is such. I mean, look what President Trump did. We love it. Yeah. I mean, blessing. all the rest of them to get in promised. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's the only reason they did it. And we're in a they, they had no time. intention. Yeah. We, right. we're we're a prophetic are. prophetic time, and he's yeah. fulfilling prophetic prophecy. We're in a jubilee year. And he's he's lining up with the jubilee. God's and we got perfect vision, 2020. 2020, <laughs> and it's going to be even better. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we're excited. And that's a big part of our work. We, we, marriage and family is part of it. We also are really big on bringing Israel to the church and the church to Israel, connecting right. my Jewish people to our Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, and connecting the church to the heritage that we have in. Right. in are you Jesus. concerned with the the divide that's even coming to America right now? Politically, the yeah, you know, as far as um, there is a group of people now that are, are very much against um, the Jewish people. Oh, yeah. that I've never I mean, seen I mean, that before. Muslims are number right. one in right. Hollywood. Right. The Jews, although right. they are the We're biggest there. producers right. it's, it, of Hollywood, it's like they don't belong anymore. We have to remember that the battle is not over the land primarily. It's not over the Jews primarily. It's over the book primarily. Exactly right. Good, it's the, I, have, I have Orthodox Jewish friends, not Jesus people in yeah. Israel, who say I have more in common with me because I'm a person of the book than I have with my, my contemporary uh, secular Jewish friends yes. and family. So, it, so there's this yeah. thing that God is building. The strange bedfellows are arising. Mm -hmm. People are getting saved in the oddest ways, in the oddest places. We're seeing radical Muslims come to faith. We're yes, seeing, yes. We're seeing all these things. They're seeing visions. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, we're dealing with that up front. We, we spoke into Tehran, and they, the, before we went on TV into Tehran by satellite, uh, the, the host said, they will be listening to your words, but they'll be watching your marriage because they've just come out of Islam and they don't know anything about wow. the shared honor and the shared de sense of destiny. You know, so they're mm -hmm. watching. Like, Miles Whoa. called them prophetically to be the Esther of their day, and you know, there's more coming to faith in in Iran than than, than ever before. I mean, I, I pray for revival. Them every morning, We're, they're yeah. in revival. There's billions. Of, think on that rug five times every right. day. They're yeah. praying to a dead right. God that right. will never help them one moment. Right. So we yeah. always say to be pro-Jewish is not to be anti-Muslim or anti-Arab. Right. Yes, right. We're all people. We work for all people. Yeah. And we want God's kingdom yeah. to come through His can, Word. Can you help me out with, uh, uh, you talk about in the book, page 42, a Hebrew wedding. Yes. Undercover lovers? Yes. So well, that's, that's the chuppah. That's the, the chuppah is the, 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 the canopy that we get married under yes, and it's okay. a picture not only of the the cloud by day and the fire by night in the wilderness the covering of God in the wilderness but it's also the Shekinah the Shekinah we say in California the Shekinah of uh, the glory of God on the couple and the, the point of it is that when the glory of God is on on a couple mm -hmm. when it's on like you guys if you get married under that hoop the sides are open right so God's glory comes out through your marriage and touches the world yeah. around you Wow. And so undercover lovers is that we want to be under his covering, under his love, and under his promises. So it's a double, a double You, you say, uh, heading chapter four, heaven knocks the hell yes. out of your marriage. Yes. yes. Because we, we all have, we're all vulnerable to either wisdom from above or wisdom from below. We're, mm -hmm. we're vulnerable to two kinds of spirits, you know, it's just the spirit of God or the spirit of the enemy. Right. So if you are inviting the presence of God, which we learned early in marriage, we have to do because right. we don't know what we're doing. So God help, you know, and so we, that's become a daily First prayer way. we learned, God help. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's help. easy. Yeah. Yeah. And then I learned it again from my, my firstborn when he was a toddler. He would get wedged behind the chair against the wall, and he'd yell, stuck. And I thought, that's a good prayer. Oh, that's so cute. That's a really good prayer, stuck. And God answers that. But the, the, the idea in that is that um, 
we, we realize that we don't have the wisdom that we need, so we have to look up to get yeah. the wisdom that we need. And if you're moving in a above. different source, right, the enemy wants to come and bring, you know, division. division. So when you can see those you, heavenly, whatsoever is good, is pure, peaceable, easy mm -hmm. being treated, that's from above. So we want to draw on that. You, you guys envy and strife. You guys right. obviously never had a problem in your marriage. Never. Right? Which is, you know. 30, I, 30 years are you I celebrating? You, 34. 34. 34 years. I, you know what? It's hard for people to relate to, but no, we've never had that, an yeah. argument. No we've argument. Never had that's a problem. true. We've go to bed. You've gone to bed happy every night. <laughs> no, yeah, but we, just, we do, we do try, we do, simple things is be quick to forgive, have a sense of humor, yeah. um, mm -hmm. know that you have an enemy and your husband's not it. You know, there's wow. a real enemy that's I out to, to destroy, destroy your life. life, destroy your marriage, and, um, and, and don't let the sun, if you can, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Make sure that you, you can say, mm -hmm. you know, we got we to gotta deal with this. You might not deal with it all in one night, but yeah. you say, we're going to deal with this. because I, I feel like there's a word for someone today, right now, Good. from this thing that Catherine just said, that you are looking at your spouse and thinking that they're your enemy. And God is saying to you right now that he wants you to look up and look down yes. and look out. Look up to the Lord, look mm -hmm. down and recognize your true enemy is the enemy of your soul, it's not your spouse. Mm -hmm. And start to look out and see your spouse the way the Lord sees them. Wow. Amen. Wow. Oh. That's Bring good, healing, that's Lord. very good. You know, yeah. it's amazing. We've been doing this for a few years. Uh, and the places that you hear that somebody watched mm -hmm. is just yeah. unbelievable. God is good. Because it's like, they they're pulled in just right. like you were with her yes. they're pulled in and then the holy spirit does the rest that's right because we get the, we, we sometimes get the idea boy I, that was pretty good I, I talked about the lord boy that what, did you hear what i said <laughs> you had nothing to do with it that's right you had, i mean yeah. god just use you will you shut up and let him use you that's, that's right but that's what yeah. you just did yeah we pray for we pray that god would bring that healing to marriages and hope because hell is pushing at the door but heaven is also knocking mm -hmm. and we just have to open that door and, and let him come in yeah. that's exactly right i bet you've had some real miracles though and in, oh, in all the years that you've been in ministry i have we have together many and miracles. many both at home and overseas i mean demonic deliverance and and mm -hmm. re restoration that was impossible you see more demonic in europe right in, in, in Africa, in India, India. Yeah. India. African yeah. India. It's, it, it's, it's like it's we don't, we don't think it's real no, it, until right. you get there it's, and you go, wait yeah. a minute. Well, we were, it's dressed up here. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it may not seem yeah, that's the as truth. apparent. Good point. But I don't, I'm not looking for demons or anything. I'm looking for the balance of, you know, where's the Lord? Yeah. What's yeah. the psychological, yeah. emotional, or maybe Amen. the medical problem? And discern what this person yeah. needs and treat them holistically. Or Do right. you ever run into them that don't, they don't want any part of Jesus Christ oh, in their life? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, it, how do you help somebody like that? It's There's very one. hard, and usually they'll fire me. Oh, you know, yeah. if I if I if I come to that pl place with them, we've built to a place where it's time for them to receive the Lord, and, yeah. and they don't want to. They'll they'll just stop coming to me. You know, but it's very yeah. rare. I mean, I've, it's been. We've been really blessed. We've been know. very blessed. Like people will seek miles out. So I, I mean, I can't even. I don't even know who you're talking about. But people just maybe they move on. But. We just pray for hungry people to come that find us, and God brings brings the harvest. You yeah. talk about in on chapter five uh, a covenant, yes, and, and you talk about a blood covenant. Yes, what is that? I mean, you you you, you don't do that in your marriage, right? It's I mean, a you don't communion. Say, Cut your finger. And no, let's put no, it. but that's this is a good. Example. I might even have that example in there of to to get this chapter started about when kids do that. Yeah. When you know, we used to do that in the fifties. Sure. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Was, right, you know, right. if you had a girlfriend, if she didn't, right. you know, I mean, you didn't mix right. your blood. It was like, well, you don't thank like goodness you didn't yeah. ask me to do yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> that was well, on the end of it. <laughs> you know, it goes back. Obviously, it goes back to the blood covenants in the in the Word in the Old Test, Older Testament, yeah. and the, the co covenant that God cut with Abraham. But what we see in in the marriage is that, and it's really what that leads to is towards the end of the book, we'll talk about the place of communion mm -hmm. and the reality mm -hmm. that the modern covenant is most exemplified in the bread and the cup. Yeah. And so we wow. are big fans. In fact, we recently went through a health thing together and we took communion every day. Mm -hmm. You know, one of us had an issue. Wow. And so every day we took communion until things were moving forward, you know. That is neat. And yeah. so mm -hmm. there, it's a miracle. It's it's not a, it's not a rite or ritual or a ceremony. Yeah. The, the cup I like the, the bread, way you, you, you let scripture do the talking mm -hmm. rather than you got some idea here that is other than what the Word of God says. Because oh, yeah. yeah. I see that a lot. It's the power. Yeah. The power is in this is my textbook. 
Catherine, I'm yes. going to ask. We got about two and a half minutes, okay. so you can go right to the wall. Okay. That's your camera right there. All right. What? Share with somebody that they're going through. Okay. A mess. All right. Well, I just want you to know that God is the God of second chances, and He is also the God of recovery, and so He wants you to know that whether you failed or someone else failed, He has a second chance for you. He has a new beginning. He's the God of the new beginnings, and so I'm praying that over you now, that he, not only does He love you with an everlasting love, He will love you through this, this, this trial that you're in. And so I want you to know that He's calling your name. He's telling you I'm the God of second chances and that he, 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 don't look at what happened. Don't look at who's right or who's wrong. Just look to Him and He'll bring you through. Pray for him. And so Father, I thank you for this this precious one mm -hmm. that knows, Lord, that you are calling their name, that you're speaking to them now, that you're desiring that they would know this the second chance God, the God of recovery, the God that will come again and revive them and restore them. And so, Father, I thank you for your revival. I thank you for your restoration. And I thank you, Lord, for most of all, your peace that passes all Amen. understanding Amen. to be with them. Wow. Amen. Wow. Amen. Isn't it great to know? I mean, people watch they have no idea why they're watching mm -hmm. that's why yeah yeah that is powerful because you know there's yeah. a lot of hurting people that, that, that are watching today yeah. i know and that's why we're big fans of believers in christian television yeah, yeah. thank yeah. you for Goes what you places do where no one else can yeah go. well your your son married right yes, yes. he married Who, Re day star rebecca <laughs> lamb yes <laughs> so they're the rebecca lamb weiss yeah. very pretty he's not saying stuck anymore is he <laughs> no. no, he's a mover. <laughs> he's, he's a mover. He's moving forward, but he, they, they have a very he's, full life. Yes, so. oh, that's we great. love yeah. them. Yeah. And we have our first grandbaby. Oh, oh wonderful. Asher Samuel Weiss. So yeah. now the legacy lives on. Oh. And that, that whole story is a, a beautiful story. Yeah, I, I was just sitting here, we, we need uh, uh, at least two or three shows <laughs> yes. just to cover the first two yes. chapters. Oh, it's, it's so amazing. nice meeting you both. Lovely to be well. with you. Thank what you for being here. Jesus Christ is the answer to every need you may have. Read at least two chapters today. God bless you. Bye-bye.